Hey everybody, my name is Sarah Caswell and I'm super excited because this is my first nursing YouTube video. Today I wanted to make my video about tips for passing the NCLEX. I just passed my NCLEX a couple weeks ago and I've had a lot of fellow classmates asking for advice, study points to focus on and things like that. So I wanted to make a little video about what I did, what worked for me, and maybe it'll help somebody else pass too. So since this is my first video, I want to say a little bit about myself first. So like I said, my name is Sarah and I graduated from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette in May. Now I graduated on May 15th and then I registered to take my NCLEX on May 19th. That's when I got my authorization to test and I took my NCLEX on May 30th. So I did not have a lot of time to prepare hardcore for the NCLEX but I got cut off at 60 questions which is the current minimum due to coronavirus and I ended up passing at first when I got cut off at 60 questions I was like thank the lord I'm out of here I'm done thank you goodbye I got to the car all the anxiety starts coming in I start second guessing answers that I put I start realizing well maybe it cut me off because I was just doing so badly but like I said, I ended up passing in 60 questions, so it worked out. So I'm going to talk about the resources that I used. I only used really three things. The main resource that I used was the Hearst Review, but I also used Passpoint and NCLEX R and Mastery app. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of those. So like I said, my main method of studying was the Hearst Review, and they send you a beautiful workbook in the mail and they also have online lectures for you to go through. They have a self-paced review and then they have the live review. Personally I did the self-paced review because I wanted to be able to take my time with things even though I was kind of on a time crunch. I wanted to set my own goals for myself and be able to go back easily and take detailed notes as I was going through the lectures. Now with the self-paced review, it took me about five days to get through all of the lectures and that was with studying maybe five or six hours a day. A lot of my classmates did the live review and they liked it because it kept them on track and it kept them focused. It's really up to you. You can go back and look at the lectures either way, whether you have the live or the self-paced review. Now along with the lectures, they also have four practice tests. I only had time to take two of the tests but I think the tests are very valuable. They have a lot of good NCLEX style questions, really good rationales, and I found that although the material itself was not the same on my NCLEX, the style of the questions very closely mimicked my NCLEX, so those are very helpful resources for you. Also, in the end of each lecture, which is divided up by topic, you can take a short quiz just to see if you retained the information and what areas you might need to go back and review again later. For me, the main benefit of Hearst Review was the prioritization and delegation questions, which was probably most of my NCLEX, so it was beneficial in that sense. However, they have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of material. And in my experience, a lot of the core content wasn't really on my NCLEX, but I've heard from other people that their NCLEX came basically straight from it, so it really depends on your own individual test. On the other hand, in order to answer those prioritization and delegation questions, you need to know information to be able to answer them. So I think going through the core content is gonna be beneficial either way. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the cost because there's a bunch of different options and I wanted to talk about kind of like the pros and cons of each. One option, you could just buy the QBank so it's just the practice questions. You have access to the questions for 30 days and it's $109. In my opinion, I feel like you can find practice questions so many other places, it would be more valuable for you to go, go ahead and go and get the content. So the Hearst now is the self-paced review that I did. It includes 90 days of access to the lectures and the practice questions. Normally it's $249, but right now it's on sale for $199. The Hearst Now Plus is basically just longer access to the lectures and the questions, and they have a little bit more study aids to help guide you through your week areas and more guides of what you should be focusing on if you have a little bit more time to go back and review those areas over again. The last option is the Hearst InStream, which is the live review. This one is $399.
it's the same material as the self-paced review. The only difference is that it's live, and then after the live stream or in-person review, you have longer access to the lectures online. Overall, I definitely recommend the Hirsch review. I think it was very beneficial to kind of pull some things out of the back of my mind and pull them to the forefront for my NCLEX and get me in the right mindset to be thinking NCLEXy, as they say, and answer my questions on the NCLEX appropriately. The second resource that I used was Passpoint. Now, this was included as part of our class. We all got access to it. However, it is available for purchase for anybody. This one was probably my favorite resource overall because of its ability to mimic NCLEX testing. You can take adaptive tests that will mimic your NCLEX. It will adapt the question's difficulty levels as you go along. And once it senses that you've passed that minimum passing standard, it'll cut you off at whatever number of questions. So it's basically like taking a practice NCLEX, which I think is really cool. And then afterwards, you can see like your progress throughout the exam. You can read all the rationales for your questions. I honestly had fun doing it. Along with the mock NCLEX exams, it also has practice quizzes that you can take. It'll help you identify your weak areas. You can take quizzes for specialty topics. So it's mostly just practice questions, but there's a lot you can do with it, and I think it's very beneficial. The cheapest plan available is three-month access, and that is $159.99. Now, the last resource that I used was an app that I've had on my phone for a while. It's called the NCLEX RN Mastery app. Now, you can download this app for free on your smart device. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of practice questions, like over 2,000 practice questions. I actually downloaded this app my first semester of nursing school when I got into clinicals, and I would just do questions every now and then, like when I was falling asleep at night or if I was waiting in line, just, you know, whenever I had free time and remembered that I had the app, I would open it and just answer a few questions and then see how I did, just kind of for fun at first, and then as I got closer to actually graduating. I would open the app and answer some questions and it would help me identify weak areas and it's also good to help you visualize your progress. The only negative part about this app in my opinion is I feel like it focuses more on knowing information than answering NCLEX style questions. Although they have some good NCLEX questions here and there, it's mostly testing your knowledge. I think it's good to review kind of what topics you're weak on, but if you want to answer more NCLEX style questions that you're actually going to see on your test, I would recommend either Hearst Review, Passpoint, or some other NCLEX style question resource. Along with practice questions, it also has things like videos, mnemonics, flashcards, skill reviews, and other helpful resources, but I mostly used it for the practice questions. One other resource that I didn't use personally, but a lot of my classmates did, and they said it was very, very helpful, is UWorld. I looked into it and it seems to be the most helpful for practice questions. There's tons and tons and tons of practice questions and the cheapest plan is $129 for 30 day access. Next, I wanna talk about some study tips for the NCLEX. Although it's good to review your core content and to review the main information again, I would direct your focus more on practice questions. Personally, if I had to do it over again, then I would focus more on practice questions and less on reviewing the information from my lectures that I was doing again. There's no way you're going to remember every little piece of information that you study. So I think it's more important to practice applying it and answering NCLEX style questions and getting your brain in that mindset to understand what the NCLEX is wanting from you. Now, when you do do practice questions, it's important to go over your rationales. You should at least be reading your rationales for questions that you missed and questions that you totally guessed on but happened to get right. Preferably, you want to read all your rationales, but at a minimum, if you're on a time crunch like me, read those two. Another tip that I have is to take the NCLEX as soon as possible after you graduate. All that information is still fresh. You're going to be motivated to study. Don't forget that your knowledge is at its peak at this time and you don't want to let it start flushing away. You want to use what's there and apply it on your NCLEX. It's going to increase your anxiety if you put it off. You're probably not going to be as motivated to study because you're going to think it's far in the future. I don't have to worry about it right now. So I would say just get it over with. An important point though to make with that is that if you have some important life event like 
marriage or if you lost someone close to you or if you're moving, that is a reason for you to put the NCLEX off because you're not going to be focused on studying and preparing. So in that case, you would want to take it later. Another important study tip that I have is to set goals for yourself. It's very easy after you graduate nursing school to lose motivation to study. So by setting goals for yourself, you say, oh, I'm going to do this many topics a day. I'm going to do this many question practice questions a day. You're going to be more successful in completing your study plan. Also, don't just make the plan in your head. Write it down because it's going to be very easy for you to say, I don't need to do that today. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll just alter this little part. I don't need to do this today. Write it down and say, this is solidified. I'm going to do this because I know where I need to be and I know what I need to do. As I kind of mentioned before, it's important to go over all your core content, kind of re refresh your memory a little bit in those areas, but really, really, really focus on prioritization and delegation questions. That has shown to be the majority of your tests, management of care, assignment, things like that. But also remember that you need to know about your disease processes, medications, complications, things like that to be able to answer those questions. So you got to have a healthy balance between those two. Also, don't overload yourself with information. Like I said, you're not going to remember every little piece of information that you study. Nursing school has prepared you for this. You've been preparing for this test for years. Remember, but the NCLEX is more of a nursing judgment test than it is a memorization test. So while it's important to have a good foundation to answer those questions, you don't want to bombard yourself with information and then everything gets scrambled in your head and you get confused and overwhelmed and anxious. No. What you need to pass the test is in your head already, tucked away somewhere, somewhere back there. Just trust yourself. Trust that you prepared for so many years. You know you can do it. My last study tip is that the day before your test, you want to try and relax and do something fun. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite by saying that because I did study the day before my exam, but that's because I didn't have much time to study, so I wanted to make use of my time. However, I did spend a little bit of that day relaxing with my family and just having a little bit of fun. Now, we're going to talk about test day. Test taking tips. So the morning of your test, you want to make sure to get up extra early, give yourself ample time to get your, to your testing center. If you live nearby, you can drive past it, make sure you know where to park and things like that the day before, just so you're not stressed about that the morning of. You want to get to your test center early. I got to mine about an hour early, sat in the car for maybe 20, 25 minutes, and then I went into the testing center about 35 minutes before the test. Also, you want to try and eat a good breakfast the morning of your NCLEX. Personally, I don't do well with eating super early in the morning, but I did have some almonds to get some good protein, brain power, and energy in my head and get myself ready to take that test. Also, you want to make sure you're hydrated, so drink plenty of water starting the day before and leading up to your NCLEX. But make sure you go to the bathroom before you, before you walk into that test center because, you know. Something else that I did the morning of my test is I brought a little cheat sheet that I had prepared the night before and I just wrote down some key lab values on it and I read it about 10 minutes before going into my test center. If you want, you can make a little cheat sheet to review before you go in. Just make sure you don't put too much stuff on it because you don't want to put all that stuff in the forefront of your brain and then scramble it up with information you learned previously and get all confused. Something to remember while taking the test. Pretty much every answer could be right, but it's your job to figure out which one's the most right, which one is your biggest priority, which one is going to kill the patient first. Most of the time I was able to narrow it down to two answers. To be honest, a lot of the time I felt like I was playing eeny, meeny, miny, moe. It was like this one, maybe that one, maybe this one. You need to use what you do confidently know about the information in the question to help you answer. And remember to choose the most life-threatening answer first. Also, if you get a question that has some kind of medication or disease that you've never heard of, or if you've heard about it before but you don't remember anything about it, use what you do know to help you answer the question. For example, does it give you what's going on with the patient in the question? 
Sometimes the symptomology or descriptions given to you in the question or the answers can help you kind of remember a little bit or be able to make an educated guess about that particular medication or disease process. Worst case scenario, just go with your gut. Trust yourself and trust your gut answer if you aren't able to make a true judgment call on it. Please, please, for your sake, please do not try to relearn farm. You've been through that one time too many. We don't need to do it again. Save yourself from that trauma. But you can use what you know about disease processes and drug classes to help you answer the question. Another test taking strategy that's really important to remember is to choose the least invasive answer first, but you also don't want to delay care. So there's kind of two sides of that coin and it's a little bit tricky to figure out which side is right sometimes. I'm gonna give you guys two basic examples about what I'm talking about. So take this question for example. A patient with acute respiratory distress syndrome is receiving oxygen by a non-rebreather mask, but arterial blood gas measurements still show poor oxygenation. As the nurse responsible for this patient's care, you would anticipate a physician order for what action? Perform endotracheal intubation and initiate mechanical ventilation? immediately begin continuous positive airway pressure via the patient's nose and mouth, administer furosemide 100 milligrams IV push stat, or call a code for respiratory arrest. Now this is a question where you may want to say, oh, well, I'll go with the least invasive choice first. But the answer is actually A, perform endotracheal intubation and initiate mechanical ventilation. Why? Why are we choosing the most invasive answer. I thought it was least invasive first, but remember that they're on a non-rebreather mask already. Non-rebreather masks deliver almost 100% oxygen. If their sats are still low on a non-rebreather mask, obviously it's not working. Also remember that they're an ARDS patient, and ARDS often has refractory hypoxemia, so hypoxemia that's not responsive to oxygenation measures. At this point, they could go into respiratory arrest if we don't do something more invasive than a non-rebreather mask. And by intubating, we are decreasing their work of breathing and overall improving their oxygenation status. So this is a situation in which you will want to go for the most invasive option because of the risk for severe complications. Here's another example on the other side of the coin. The client is one day postpartum and the nurse notes the fundus is displaced laterally to the right. Which nursing intervention should be implemented first? Prepare to perform an in and out catheterization. Assess the bladder using the bladder scanner. Massage the client's fundus for two minutes or assist the client to the bathroom to urinate. I'm sure you've heard this question before, but this is a good example about least invasive option first. So if you remember from maternity, whenever the patient's fundus is dis displaced laterally, that likely means that their bladder is full. In this case, you want to go for the least invasive option first and see if they're able to void. Now, if they were unable to void, then they may have to do an in and out cath. But if they are able to void, it'll empty the bladder and allow the fundus to go back to its normal position and to contract and reduce the risk of bleeding. Another test taking strategy is to assume the worst. So basically the answer will almost never be reassess in 15 minutes. If it's a question, they're trying to get you to recognize a problem. So it's very unlikely that you would just reassess again later. There's a problem and you wanna do whatever you can to fix the problem. Also, you don't wanna choose call the primary care provider unless there's literally nothing you can do. So read all your choices, see which one can I do right now that's gonna help the patient. Calling the doctor is not going to help them in the immediate present. You wanna do what you can as the nurse to get the patient stable or to help them however you can and then notify the doctor of their changes and see if there's any further orders or interventions that will need to be completed. Another important point to remember is to take your time on each question as you're going through the test. But if you find yourself spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time on one question, then you should pick the answer that's calling your heart the most and then move on. Remember that we're not aiming for an A or B like we were in nursing school anymore, we're aiming to show the NCLEX algorithm that we are competent to start practicing as nurses. The NCLEX wants you to pass. It's going to try and give you a question that it thinks you can answer. 
And if the questions seem like they're super, super hard, then that probably means you're in the higher level questions. If you end up going past 60 or 75 questions, whatever the minimum is at the time, don't panic. If you were doing poorly on the test, it would have just stopped you. It's giving you more questions to answer, so that's a good sign. On the other hand, if you do get cut off at the minimum number of questions, that is most likely a very good sign that you did pass. That isn't true all the time, but it's usually a pretty good sign. Now, after your test, it's normal to feel like you failed. I went in car, started panicking immediately, but I've also had friends that felt confident after taking their NCLEX and they ended up passing as well. So it really depends on each individual's personal NCLEX experience. Try to relax. You don't want to sit there and overthink your NCLEX, overthink every question that you answer. That's just going to make you feel worse. It's over now. The, this test is done. Go relax. Spend time with your family. Spend time with your friends. Do something fun. Also important to remember is to not compare yourself to others. It's easy to hear, oh, this person had all these alternate format questions and I only had a few. Does that mean I failed? Things like that. Whatever type of questions that you get does not determine whether you passed or failed. It's each individual question's difficulty level that matters, not the type or format of question. Finally, your results. They've come in. If you're in a state that has the quick results, 48 hours, you got your results. If not, it could take up to six weeks based on your state board. If you pass, congratulations. Now is the time to go celebrate. You are officially a nurse well you're waiting for your license to come in the mail but you're basically officially a nurse so congratulations go celebrate you're done but if you failed your NCLEX please do not get discouraged there are so many great nurses out there who failed their NCLEX on their first try try again pick yourself up you can do it you know you can do it you prepared for this test maybe try out some new resources you can try the ones that I mentioned in this video or if you have some other ones that you've heard of from classmates or co-workers. I know you can pass that NCLEX. You know you can pass that NCLEX. So go out there and kill that NCLEX. After all, you made it through nursing school. If you made it through nursing school, you can do anything. All right, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you have any other helpful resources that you'd like to share, please comment them down below. I'm also gonna include links to all the resources that I used in the description. And good luck to all you guys taking your in clicks soon. Bye.